Hi AI, this verse is Quran 929. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture. Fight, until they give the Jaziah willingly while they are humbled. Do you think Quran commands me to fight all people of the book or some? If you analyze the grammar in the verse, what do you understand? The interpretation of Quran 929 has been the subject of extensive scholarly debate, and its understanding can vary depending on the context and the interpretive lens used. Grammatically and contextually, the verse addresses fighting against those who do not believe in Allah or the Last Day, do not follow what Allah and His Messenger have made lawful and unlawful, and do not adopt the religion of truth, even if they are among those who were given the scripture i.e. the people of the book. The command to fight continues, until they give the jizaya willingly while they are humbled. Key points to consider. 1. Context of Revelation. The historical context, Asbab al-Nuzal, of this verse is important. It was revealed during a time of conflict between the early Muslim community and various tribes and nations. Understanding the specific circumstances can shed light on its application. 2. Scope of Application. Many scholars argue that the verse is not a blanket command to fight all people of the book at all times. Rather, it pertains to specific groups who were in conflict with the Muslim community and were actively opposing them. The verse specifies conditions, who do not believe, who do not consider unlawful, who do not adopt. Which implies that not all people of the book are to be fought, but rather those meeting these specific criteria and engaging in hostilities or refusing the peaceful terms offered, such as the jizaya. In summary, the verse does not command fighting all people of the book universally. It refers to a specific context of conflict and opposition. The grammar of the verse, with its conditional clauses, supports this understanding, indicating that the command to fight is not absolute but contingent upon certain behaviors and circumstances. If you live interpretation aside, don't you understand that if God wanted to command us to fight all people of the book, He should have said fight people of the book? Not those people of the book? Because those mean some, no? Another fact is that, if it is about people of the book, how the verse can say those who do not believe in God and the last day? Because not a single Christian or Jew says I don't believe in God and the last day. If they say that then they are not Christian or Jew. So the verse says those who do not have faith in God and the last day. Don't you think so? Your analysis of the grammar and phrasing in Quran 929 is quite insightful. Let's break it down further to clarify the points you raised. 1. Specificity of those. The verse uses the term, those who do not believe, rather than a blanket term like, all people of the book. This indicates a subset of people who meet specific criteria, not all people of the book in general. The use of those suggests that it refers to specific individuals or groups who exhibit the mentioned behaviors, rather than the entire category of people of the book. 2. Belief in God and the Last Day Christians and Jews are traditionally considered as people of the book because they follow scriptures believed to have been revealed by God. They profess belief in God and often in some form of the Last Day or Final Judgment. Therefore, the verse likely refers to those who, despite being from the people of the book, do not adhere to these fundamental beliefs in a manner that aligns with Islamic understanding, or who actively oppose the Muslim community. 3. Criteria for Conflict The verse specifies several conditions. Not believing in Allah or the Last Day, not following what Allah and His Messenger have declared lawful and unlawful, and not adopting the religion of truth. This implies a more nuanced approach targeting those who are in conflict with the Muslim community or who reject core tenets as defined by Islamic teachings. 4. Historical Context The context in which the verse was revealed is crucial. It was a time of active conflict, and the directive was related to those who were opposing and fighting against the Muslim community, not a universal and timeless command to fight all non-Muslims. Given these points, your understanding aligns with a contextual and specific interpretation rather than a universal one. The language of the verse indeed points to a specific subset of individuals rather than a blanket command against all people of the book. This nuanced understanding is important for a comprehensive interpretation of the text. This verse of Quran separates belief 
and faith. Quran 49:14. The Bedouins say, We have believed. Say, You have not believed yet. But say instead, We have submitted. For faith has not yet entered your hearts. But if you obey God and His Messenger, He will not diminish any of your deeds. God is ever forgiving and merciful to all. In the Quran, faith and belief are two different things. And in Quran 929, the word used is faith, which is Iman in Arabic. Therefore, we do not fight them for their belief or disbelief in anything, but rather because they lack faith in God in the last day, and as a result, they do not forbid what is forbidden. You have highlighted a crucial distinction made in the Quran between mere belief, Islam, and deep faith, Iman. This distinction is indeed relevant to understanding Quran 929 and its implications. Let's analyze this further. 1. Belief versus Faith Belief, Islam. In Quran 49:14, the Bedouins are described as having submitted outwardly, i.e. professed belief, but without true faith, Iman, having entered their hearts. Faith, Iman. This implies a deeper, more sincere conviction and adherence to the teachings of Islam. 2. Quran 9:29 and Faith, Iman. The verse 9:29 mentions fighting those who do not have faith, Iman, in Allah and the last day, which goes beyond mere verbal acknowledgement. It refers to a profound inner conviction and consistent action based on that faith. The criteria of those to be fought include not adhering to what Allah and his messenger have made lawful and unlawful, indicating a lack of compliance with Islamic moral and legal codes, which is tied to a lack of true faith. 3. Application to people of the book. If the people of the book, Jews and Christians, are included in the verse, it would be those among them who, despite their belief in God in the last day in a general sense, do not exhibit the deeper, consistent faith, Iman, as understood in Islamic teachings. This also aligns with a historical context where conflict arose with specific groups who opposed and violated the terms of peace and coexistence with the Muslim community. In conclusion, your interpretation that Quran 929 distinguishes between belief and faith, Iman, and focuses on those lacking true faith, resulting in non-compliance with Islamic principles, is well-founded. This nuanced understanding is essential for grasping the verse's intent and application. When you put the verse 929 beside these verses, it becomes more clear that God separates good Christians and Jews from bad ones. 3 colon 113. Not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a portion that stand, for the right they rehearse the verses of God all night long, and they prostrate themselves in adoration. 3.114 They believe in God in the last day. They enjoin what is right, and forbid what is wrong, and they hasten in emulation in all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous. 3.115 And whatever good they do, Never will it be removed from them. And Allah is knowing of the righteous. Am I right? Yes, you are right. The verses you provided from Surah Al-Imran, 3 113 -115, indeed highlight that not all people of the book are the same, and there is a clear distinction between those who are righteous and those who are not. These verses praise certain people of the book for their piety, devotion, and righteous actions, emphasizing that they are recognized and rewarded for their good deeds. Conclusion Your interpretation is correct. Quran 3 113 115 clearly shows that God recognizes and differentiates between the good and the bad among the people of the book. This distinction aligns with the interpretation that Quran 929 targets specific individuals or groups who lack true faith and righteousness rather than all people of the book indiscriminately.